as you sit, just find your sit bones and kind of rock your weight side to side, noticing when you feel even on the ground. Root your tailbone down so you feel your lower abdominals engage. Feel your chest lifted so your spine's getting longer here, top of your head stretching towards the ceiling. Your chin is parallel to the ground. So you're stretching the top of your head away from your tailbone. You're lengthening the spaces between your vertebrae. Bring your hands together at your chest, Anjali Mudra. Take an inhale through your nose. Open mouth, exhale. Inhale, Ujjayi. So find a little constriction in the back of your throat. And exhale, Ujjayi. Keep your lips sealed. Exhale through your nose. Now slowly flutter your eyes open. We'll begin warming up the spine. Inhale for mountain pose. Seated mountain. We'll take a nice long stretch. Reach your arms up over the head. And as you root down, you're lengthening up at the same time. Check out your lower ribs. Knit them in so that your spine stays stacked. Take a full breath in. As you exhale, side bend to the right. So right hand comes down, left arm stretches high up and over. Check out your left hip, it wants to follow your arms. You gotta roll your left sit bone down so you can stay even on the ground. You can bend your right elbow back slightly towards you and just really feel that nice big stretch across the whole left side of your body. Breathe into your rib cage, inhale. And exhale. Inhale, come back to center, lengthen out of your waist. So feel your spine nice and tall, nice and neutral. And then exhale over to the other side. So left arm down, reach your right arm high up and over. Try to roll your right shoulder back slightly so you're keeping your torso lifted. You're kind of spinning your rib cage towards the sky. And then roll your right sit bone down so that your seat stays even on the ground. Reach your right hand away from your right hip, so you're feeling that whole long line from your fingertips all the way down your right side. Breathe into your right hip rib cage. See if you can expand. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, slowly come back to center. Reach up out of your waist. Now interlace all ten fingers and just grab right at the base of your head. Allow the weight of your head to fall back into your hands. And then stretch your elbows back away from you. So you're feeling that nice broad sensation across the chest, across the inner arms. The more you bring your elbows back, the bigger stretch you're going to feel. Keep your chest lifted so that your spine is long here. Continuously breathe in and out of your nose. If you're holding your breath, come out a little bit. You might be a little bit too deep into the pose. On your next inhale, reach your arms up over your head, lengthen. Then exhale, relax your arms by your side. Just allow your breath to come to natural, your eyes to close. Just feel the effects of movement in your body. So you're kind of moving your spine around, shaking up your tissues. Next, we'll move into tabletop position. So if you're sitting up on something, you can move it off to the side. And then find yourself in your shoulders stacked over your wrists and your hips over your knees. So take a moment here to feel grounded. You want your palms to spread nice and wide. And then imagine you're stretching the top of your head away from your tailbone. So you want to look down about a foot in front of your hands. So top of your head reaching away from your tailbone the best you can and then keep pulling your belly button in here so you feel really strong, really firm in this posture. Inhale for cow pose, drop your belly, lift your gaze, see if you can lift your chin and get a nice stretch to your throat. We spend a lot of time looking down, so you might really feel this sensation. Breathe into it, inhale. And exhale for cat, tuck your chin, round your spine, so moving in the opposite direction. You can even tuck your toes into the ground to get some stretch to the bottoms of your feet. You're rounding your backside body as well as compressing the front. Inhale for cow pose, untuck your toes, drop your belly, lift your gaze. And exhale for cat, tuck in around, really press the mat away from you. See if you can dome up that little space between your shoulders. 
One more time, inhale, cow pose. So really feeling that undulation of your spine. And exhale for cat, press and round. You can tuck your toes only if you like. Nice, now find a neutral spine. So back into your tabletop position. Take your right foot and bring it between your hands. So you might need to take a couple steps to get it up there, no problem. And then walk your right foot forward enough so that you can really sink into your lunge. So a little bit of a um, hip opener here to start. So keeping your right leg engaged, if you push down with your heel, you'll feel your quadricep light up. So nice and strong with the thigh, that'll keep yourself from um, kind of putting any weight into the, into the joints. You're, you're using your muscles, you're using your bones here. And then just allowing the weight of your pelvis to get heavy. Notice if your hips are in alignment. So you might need to pull your right hip back a little bit to even out the hips. Take another full breath here, inhale. And then as you exhale, bring yourself back into child's pose. So hands to the ground, toes touch, knees come out wide to the side. Sink your hips back towards your heels. You can choose to stretch your arms forward or you can um, cross your palms and rest your hands on the back of your, um, or rest your head on the back of your hands. So just stay here for a couple of breaths. Feel the low back spread, your hips open up here. You're also in a slight inversion, so getting a little bit of blood flow to the brain. Take another full breath in, Ujjayi, constrict your throat. And exhale, Ujjayi, send the breath out. Let's do the same thing on the other side, coming back into tabletop position. First, a couple of rounds of cat-cow. Inhale for cow pose, drop your belly, lift your gaze. And exhale for cat. In the second set, if you want to take the shape into any maybe side to side or front to back, just exploring your spine or trying to warm up the tissues and lubricate the joints. So just any free movement here, just moving with your own breath. Take your time. If there's any place that feels like you might want to pause and breathe into, you can do that. Take another round of breath, even out any sides if you're doing something asymmetrical and then come back to your tabletop pose. So neutral spine, top of your head stretching away from your tailbone. From here, bring your left foot between your hands so you can bring it right up and then if you need to, walk your foot up a little bit further. So you're trying to work your foot up to a place where you can um, feel supported. So you wanna kick your heel down to engage your thigh. Your left knee might go slightly past your ankle but you wanna keep more of the um, structure of the pose by putting the weight into the bones. And then just allowing the weight of your pelvis to help you stretch into the might be feeling a lot of intense sensations in the hip area and the bottom part of your body. See if you can make your space nice and soft. See if you can relax your shoulders and your chest. Take another full breath in. And then exhale, coming back to child's pose. One more time, so toes touch, heels come out, or knees come out to the side. So hands forward, or if you like, you can work them behind you. Just a little bit different uh, sensation there. And then smoothing out the edges of your breath. Come forward into tabletop position. And we'll move into downward facing dog. Tucking your toes, send your hips up and back. Take a couple moments here. You can spread your hands really wide. Bend your knees right and left. And then find some stillness. Make sure your feet are about hip width distance apart. Bend your knees a lot and then shoot your tailbone up to the sky. So now wrap your shoulders in and press your chest towards your thighs. So you want to feel that long spine here. You can keep your knees bent. This is great. You want to continue that lengthening of your spine. If you want to start to bring your heels towards the ground, you can. But just remember to keep pressing your chest back away from your arms. Inhale, look forward to your hands. Exhale, walk forward to the top of your mat. Bring your feet to hip width distance. Grab for opposite elbows and just allow your body to dangle here. 
Allow the weight of your head to be heavy, so you're allowing that weight to traction your spine. Just pulling a little space between the bones. Place your hands behind your back. Make a nice fist. Try to get the meaty part of your palm together so your whole uh, fist is super glued tight. And then straighten your arms. Take the bend out of your elbows and then bring your fist towards the front of your mat. This can be any amount. Everybody will have kind of different ranges of motion. So just go to the place where your body naturally stops and just stay there. Breathe into it. You can stay like this or play around. You can bend your right knee and drop your fists over to the right side. Nice big stretch for your outer left thigh. Take it to the other side. Just a little gentle bend in the left knee this time. Bring your fists over to the left. Just one more time on each side. Just slowly, gently moving into the stretch. Release your hands to the ground. Toe heel your feet to touch and then tuck your chin to your chest. Inhale. Up we go. Rounding yourself up to standing. Take your time. Once you reach the top, shove your shoulders up and back and bring your hands together your chest once again. Anjali Mudra, the Mudra for balance. So you might notice here now that we've moved the energy from the ground to standing up, things have shifted, things have changed. So trying to find that balance across your feet. See if you can lift up your toes and spread all cor four corners of your feet down into the ground. Now slowly one by one, bringing your toes back down to the ground. Keep pushing your heels down to engage your thighs. And then slightly pushing your hips forward. Lift your chest towards your thumbs, top of your head stretching up towards the sky. Inhale for mountain pose, bring your arms up over your head. You can press your palms together and look up. Option to separate your hands. You can also keep your um, gaze forward as well. So any variation here, just make sure that you're trying to take the bend out of your elbows, nice and long with the arms. Full breath in. Exhale, gentle back bend. Open up your arms, peel your chest open. See if you can push your hips forward as you lift your chest and then drop your body back. Keep breathing. Make sure you're breathing in and out through your nose. Inhale, reach back up, mountain pose. Exhale, chair pose, airplane arms. So sit low and sweep your arms back. You want to bring the weight into your heels, so lift your toes. Make sure that's where the weight is. And then squeeze your shoulder blades together, so palms facing down. So your seat is back, your arms are back. You really have to reach your chest forward in order to keep yourself from falling down. Belly button pulls in, sit one inch deeper. You got this. Inhale, mountain, stretch up, stand tall. Exhale, bring your hands to your chest. So we'll just move through that a couple times with the breath. Inhale, mountain pose. Exhale, gentle back bend. Inhale, mountain. Exhale, chair pose, airplane arms. Inhale, mountain. Exhale, hands to chest. Let's just go one more time. Inhale, mountain. Exhale, gentle back bend. Inhale, mountain. Exhale, chair pose, airplane arms. Inhale, mountain. Exhale, hands to chest. All right, adding on, inhale for mountain pose. Exhale, gentle back bend. Inhale, mountain. Exhale, chair pose, airplane arms. Send your arms back. So different this time, one-legged mountain, bring your left leg with you. Pause here and stabilize. So you wanna bring your left thigh parallel to the ground, flex your toes towards your shin, really engaging through your whole right leg. So your right leg is strong and stable, that's your base. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, moving into tree pose. So take your foot, your left foot to the inside of your right thigh. So you can bring it up on top uh, or above your knee to your thigh. 
or you're welcome to bring it to your calf. You could also stick your toes into the ground. So practicing tree pose here. We'll stay here for a couple of breaths. Find one point on the ground that's not moving. Keep pushing your foot and your leg together in order to open up your hips. Nice. Exhale completely. Inhale, one-legged mountain. So come back to your one-legged mountain. Flex your toes towards your shins. Exhale, warrior two. So take a big step to the back of your mat and sink low into your lunge. So you want to make sure your step is big enough so that you can get exactly knee over ankle. Roll the knife edge of your back foot down. Arms reaching far away from each other. Sit nice and low into your lunge here. Feel your inner thighs scissor towards each other. So you're keeping your legs nice and engaged. That'll, that'll help you stay lifted in the pose. Nice. Sit one inch lower. Hold on to it. Exhale completely. Inhale, crescent lunge. So spin on your back toes and reach your left arm up. So you're coming into your high crescent lunge here. This is a big balance challenge. So um, take a moment to make sure that your feet feel stable. So feet are uh, on separate tracks. You want your right knee over your right ankle. Kick back with your left heel. And then pull your right hip back in line with your left so your hips are even to each other. Take a big breath in. Exhale, airplane arms. Send your arms back and tilt your torso forward. So top of your head and your heel, try to draw a line between those two points. Squeeze your shoulders together, palms facing down. Exhale. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step forward. Chair pose, airplane arms, sit low. Inhale, mountain pose. Exhale, hands to chest. Just pause here for a moment. Feel the effects. You might notice the difference between your right leg and your left leg. Your heart may be racing. Your breath might be quicker. Just observing whatever is going on for you right now. Taking a moment to ground down, return to your intention. Take a full breath in. Open mouth, exhale. Inhale, Ujjayi. And exhale, Ujjayi. Same thing on the other side. Inhale, mountain pose. Reach your arms up over your head. Exhale, gentle back bend. Arms open up, peel open your chest. Inhale, reach back up, mountain. Exhale, chair pose, airplane arms. So squeeze your shoulders together. Look down at the top of your mat. One-legged mountain. This time your right leg comes with you. So pause here and stabilize. You want to really engage your left thigh. Imagine that you're stacking your joints. So hip over knee over ankle. And flex your right toes towards your face to even out your hips. Feel really long and tall, lifted in your chest. Take another round of breath in. And then as you exhale, coming into your tree pose, so you can either bring your foot to the inside of your calf. You could grab your foot and bring it up to your inner thigh. Just please make sure you're avoiding your kneecap. Your knee doesn't like to bend this way. So just avoiding the knee because you do want to push your leg and your foot together. This is what allows you to create that opening in the hips. Find that one place to keep your focus so you're building your concentration. You got this. Nice. Come back to your one-legged mountain. Pause here. Breathe in. Exhale, warrior two. So big step to the back of your mat. Low into your lunge. Sink low as you can. So you want to try to get your left knee over your ankle. Look back at your right foot. Make sure it's about 45 degrees. Angle the knife edge of your back foot down. Arms parallel, reach your hands super far away from each other so you can feel nice and expansive across the chest. So we'll breathe here for a couple of moments. Really feeling that strong, strong, stable base. Your legs are really working hard here. Next inhale is crescent lunge. So spin high on your back toes and reach your right arm up. You may need to adjust your footing, that's totally fine. Your feet are about hip width distance, so they're on separate tracks. And then sink into your front knee. 
kick back with your right heel to take the bend out of your back knee and then pull your left hip back in line. So you want to feel really strong. Your inner thighs are working here. Big breath in. Exhale, airplane arms. So send your arms back. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Nice. Make sure your hips are even. So a little bit left hip up and back. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step forward, chair pose, airplane arms. Inhale, mountain pose, stand all the way up. And exhale, bring your hands to your chest. So we're coming down to the ground. Inhale, mountain, reach up. Exhale, fold, hands come together, hands all the way down to the floor. Inhale, halfway lift, extend your breastbone forward, hands to shins. So same thing as tabletop, top of your head stretching away from your tailbone. Exhale, high plank pose, so top of a push-up, shoulders over your wrists, so get nice and firm, pull your belly button in, squeeze your shoulder blades towards each other. Now with control, bend your elbows, keep your elbows tight to the body, and lower yourself all the way down to your belly, easy does it. So moving into bound cobra pose, interlace all 10 fingers just below your back, or just above your hips. You want to get that nice meaty whole palm fist together and then push your fist back so you can feel your shoulder blades come tight. Push your feet down into the ground. They can be hip width distance or you can squeeze them together. Exhale your breath. Inhale to lift. So using your arm strength to kind of pull your body up. You're also using your back strength here so you really want to feel that whole backside body lighting up. Nice and smooth, even breaths in and out of your nose. Push your feet down, inhale, come up one more time. Exhale, slowly lower down. Make a pillow for your forehead. Cross your hands on top of each other. And then toes in, heels out. Give your hips a little shake side to side. taking a moment to notice all that energy you created, feeling your breath, your heartbeat. Take another round of breath and then press yourself back to child's pose. Take it easy. Just as a transition here, so toes in, knees out. Take a breath in, feel that nice open space. So this might feel a lot different than the first time you did child's pose. And then walking your hands back towards you, lift your chest. Move your weight to either hip and swing your legs out long in front of you. Slide your seat forward so you can come down to lying on your back. Once you're on your back side, you can bring your knees into your chest and just take a couple rocks side to side. One more back bend for today. We'll practice bridge pose. So feet hip width distance. Make sure you can feel your heels with your fingertips. And then you want to continue to keep your knees um, pointed in the same direction. So imagine you could send your knees right over your toes. Start to lift your hips by tucking your tailbone under and then engage your thighs to lift your hips up. So rather than using your glutes, you want to use your quadricep muscles. Try to soften um, what you can here. So you do need some really strong action in the legs, but you can soften the chest. You can relax your face. You might want to walk your arms in towards each other, interlace all 10 fingers. So we've used this grip a few times in class. This is great compression for the hands helping to prevent arthritis, tendonitis, carpal tunnel. And you're trying to bring the weight up on to the tops of the shoulders here. So chest comes towards your chin, but then bring your chin away from your chest. So you're getting a nice long back of your neck there. Make sure your knees are keeping towards each other. So you want your knees to stay hip width distance apart. See if you can lift your hips up just a little bit more. And then exhale with control, slowly lower down. Walk your feet to the outside edges of your mat and let your knees knock in. They can touch each other. Just allow yourself to be supported there. Let your low back neutralize. 
Finishing our practice with an easy twist, knees to your chest. Take them over to the left side. You can allow your hands to rest wherever they feel most comfortable. You could also interlace your hands and grab the back of your head. That's nice sometimes. spine neutral before you take the shape into the other direction. And then whenever you're ready, knees to the right, looking over your left shoulder. And once again, you can allow your hands to just rest wherever they feel natural. You could do that same interlace hands behind your head if, they, if you like that. And then once you're in the shape, just kind of allowing everything to settle, so no more striving, just letting the posture do the work. So we come back to center. Give yourself one last squeeze. Thank your amazing body for everything it does for you. Thank yourself for practicing, for taking a little time out of your day for yourself. And exhale into your final Shavasana. So letting your legs go long, allowing your arms to rest beside you. And you can make this look like anything. So if you wanna bring a pillow underneath your knees or put a blanket over yourself, any kind of thing that would allow this to become more amazing for you, I would recommend you do that for yourself. Just allowing yourself to really be here in the Shavasana. So especially this kind of gift of being able to practice at home, kind of in your own space, your own comforts. So you can really enjoy the Shavasana, maybe a little longer than you might have in the studio setting. So really just allowing that whole practice, even though it was short, you still did quite a bit. So getting fluids moving, stretching things out, moving in directions that maybe you don't normally take. So just let it, allowing the body to get used to that. There's really no need to rush. If you have the time, please take it. Thank you so much for practicing. If you have any questions, you can email me at yogawithreva at gmail.com. I hope you have an amazing day. Namaste.